17 years old, Broadway, I mean, you were actually one of the youngest ever hit Broadway at that time. Uh, at the time, I was the youngest star who'd ever star. been on Broadway. That's but... the word, star, ever hit. Daria Van Frank, was it? Mm-hmm. God. Every time you walk Isn't around... Skippy, I have been around so long, it's I before know, my but... own time. <laughs> But every, everywhere you go, they always think the Diary of Anne Frank was Susan. There are so many films that you have done. Yes, I've done almost 40 films. 40? Mm -hmm. but, but they always hit Diary of Anne Frank. Well, Why? I think it's because um, Anne Frank, like Marilyn Monroe, and it's interesting that Marilyn Monroe and Anne Frank came into my life the same year. You're kidding. And both of these women, young women, became uh, mythological Characters, in other words, they became archetypal symbols of a whole era and time. Right. They both represented something different, and I also think that Anne Frank, in her way, just as Marilyn did in her way, became mirrors for the collective unconscious. So that we, by looking at these two lives of people who, you know, had this capacity to live life fully and yet were both tor tormented in their own right. ways, Anne Frank and that kind of adolescent. Uh, angst that she was going through. Marilyn, right. who was, although she was 30 years old, 28 years old, was still an adolescent and stuck back there in her pains, her dreams, her suffering. And when we look at them, they're like these giant mirrors that reflect us back to ourselves. Uh -huh. And I think what happens is that Anne Frank, Marilyn, their lives allow us or force us to say, wait a minute, what does it really mean to be human? Mm -hmm. What are our values in life? You know, the American dream says that if you're rich, famous, young, beautiful, talented, that's everything, and you should be happy. Right. So when you have somebody like Marilyn, who then is not ha who ha or me, who had right. everything, and still says, wait a minute, but I have no self-esteem, I don't feel a certain way about myself. Right. Uh, there, Marilyn, my mother, who was 12 years older than Marilyn. Paula. Uh, my mother, Paula, who was coaching Marilyn in all the movies that she right. did in the last eight years of her life. People don't realize how scary it is when you've got, you're like the horse that has to run the race and all the money right. is riding on, on you. you. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, people would say that Marilyn, for instance, they would say, well, she's dumb because she would freeze with terror. She would become so absolutely, uh, and she was so critical of herself that on top of having the terror, then there was the self-criticism. Now this is I'm talking about without the drinking or the drugs, right. because that was that Something else. Uh, that was another right. element. But without that, the absolute terror. Even someone like Eve Montand, you know, the reason that Marilyn and Eve Montand actually really hit it off. Although recently I found out that the it movie was, they did, Love Me or something like that, uh, no, it was something like some that. awful Let's movie. Let's make love. That, make love. Yeah, it's just on television. Awful it was. movie it was that Marilyn did, like the last movie that she was doing when when she she died. She did because she needed the money. Uh, because remember that she had made more money for Twentieth than any other star. Did she really? But Elizabeth Taylor was getting a million dollars and Marilyn was getting a hundred thousand. So this was the end of her contract right. uh, film she was trying to was get Marilyn rid of. Was Marilyn only getting one hundred thousand a picture? Yeah. At that <laughs> point, and then it, what happened with Montan was, yes, he was attractive, and if you look at him, he was kind of the, the type of man she liked, but he confessed to her on the set right. that he was terrified. He was as frightened as she was because he was having trouble with his English. He felt that he was making an idiot of himself. He, um, who directed that? Was it Cukor that he felt that... Charles Cukor? It, 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 George, in those George, days, yeah, who was I a brilliant director, yeah. but in those days was kind of going off a little, uh, wasn't helping him. And what happened is Marilyn said, gee, you feel just the way I do. I never had a male co-star who admitted that he was scared. And so they made this immediate kind of connection. And then uh, this is not known, actually, I don't have it in my book either. This particular uh -huh. kind of secret was not something I put in. But she was very sick. Uh -huh. And she hadn't been able to go to work. And she sent my mother. And you know, my mother, Marilyn was a drama queen. My mother was a drama queen. And I was a junior drama, drama queen. queen. <laughs> so the three of you. <laughs> so you know, if you were sick, you were sick. You were Camille uh -huh. dying. And what happened was uh, she sent, Montand was in the bungalow next door to her at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and she sent my mother next door to ask him to come see her. Mm -hmm. And he talks about going in and holding her hand and seeing that she, and she had a fever. And of course, Arthur Miller had gone off someplace to Ireland, and Simone had left right. the country. So he said that as he 
uh, Montan talked about the fact that he, uh, what happened is that he felt her far to see if she had a fever and then he was gone. They kissed and that was it. And the interesting thing is that he was very condescending, as many people were right. to Marilyn. Um, Why do you think that? Because Why? I think in America we're prejudiced against uh, sexy beauty, blondes uh, and beauties yes, and all that. that. And the fact that she was bright and sensitive and powerful or, yeah. and angry mm -hmm. uh, was too much that people couldn't deal with it. So there was an attempt to kind of, right. s you know, we suppress, and uh, this is a puritanical country, so we suppress and repress so much that when you see somebody who looks like that, who has all the stuff that you're sitting on, you then try and sit on her. That's right. Anyway, Montand confessed years later. To, to me, uh, having a couple of glasses of wine, and he said, you know, I really did love her, in spite of what he said in the newspapers, which was very demeaning. Right. Uh, he said, but I, to tell you the truth, I was afraid that I would become Mr. Monroe. <laughs> ego, it's all ego, you know, really? in this business. Uh, you know, they say that if God and the devil right. had made a co-venture, uh -huh. it would be Hollywood.